Waking up never sounded so good. Bear us your medical mumbo jumbo. Hello. Welcome in to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. Oh my. Use weather, sports, and of course all the local info you need to start your day. Is that a real show? No, it's somebody who's making a joke. Forget it. Talk of the Town on 103.7 WTIB, 94.1 WNBU, Cable 7 in Greenville. And now, listen or watch live at WTIBFM.com. Everybody still awake? All right, big finish. Now, here's your host for Talk of the Town, Henry Hinton. Welcome in, everybody. It is Wednesday morning, June 28th. Beautiful day. Temperature up to uh, 64 degrees now. We're going to 85 today in sunshine. Going to be beautiful. Welcome into Hour 2 of Talk of the Town here on 103.7 WTIB, also on 94.1 WNBU and on Cable 7 in Washington, Williamston, uh, Winterville, and what I miss? Greenville on Cable TV. And, of course, you can always see our streaming video on Facebook. Just go to uh, 103.7 WTIB on Facebook, or you can go to my page. Go to Henry Hinton on Facebook, and you can see the streaming video live. I want to say a special thanks to our engineering team, including Michael, who was out yesterday at the transmitter site repairing another in, uh, lightning strike damage to our transmitter. We are back to full strength again this morning. We do apologize for taking another lightning strike, but we're going to settle that once and for all. We're getting ready to put a new transmitter in, and, uh, and we're going to retire this uh, transmitter, who's probably as old as I am. No, it's not as old as I am, Michael. How old is it? 40 years old? The transmitter that we're on on 103.7 is probably 40, 45 years old. 87. It's 87? Yes, yeah, 87 Continental. It was built in 87? Yes. So that means it's exactly 40 years old. Yep. Is that right? McGee, do 30. the math. 30. 87? 30. 30 years old. Yeah. Well, we got another 10 years we can use it then. <laughs> yeah, we can. I'll we order some more duct tape. We'll go for it. <laughs> just get some paper clips and some duct tape, and let's keep it in service. all we need, duct tape. Good to go. Moving so on. So 30 years old? Yeah. Why is it, a 30-year-old transmitter shouldn't be taking lightning hits like this? What's going on with that? Uh, well, lifespan's 25 years for a transmitter. You don't know that. I've talked to Jerry. You he don't know to, that. He said 25 years, basically. Well, we got a new one going in, so tired of these lightning strikes taking us down to low power so but we're back thanks to jerry brown the round mound of sound and we're back and we're back <laughs> tv guys can't do that right you gotta it's gotta be more th back from the back of the throat i, I was just and we're back and we're back <laughs> <laughs> by the way i listen to my early days in radio now i've got tape from like in the 70s and that's what i sounded like it was, Why is was it, it the tape or reel to reel? It was. It's definitely. A, it was definitely a reel to reel at one time. <laughs> it's been transferred like six times to new technology. <laughs> uh, Billy Weaver is here, smart ass that he is. <laughs> Good so, morning. So We're Weaver, back. We, uh, Michael Weaver is negotiating his way out of doing the show next Wednesday. He does this show once a week, and he's like, "You're not doing the show next Wednesday, are you?" I mean, I'm, well, why wouldn't we do the show? What's well, the day after the 4th? I'm like, yes, the 5th. He wants to be at the beach on, you know, because he doesn't have to be back at the TV station until probably, what, 3? Right. So, so that, that cuts my so here's beach the thing. trip. Here's the thing. It's another motivation for us to get this new system up where I can broadcast live from the beach. Is that going to be ready to go this week? Because we're going to try it out live in Bellhaven on Friday morning, right? Yeah, we'll try it. We'll try it Friday. And then I'm ordering stuff today. So I'm... Here's what I'm telling Weaver. If so. he'll get up at the beach with me on Wednesday morning, next Wednesday, and do the show the day after the 4th, we'll do it live from the beach, and I'll buy him pancakes at the Oceana Pier. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Do it live. Can we, can we do now, it from on. the balcony the of my condo? Yes. Yes, we can. I need your computer, too, by the way. We don't need to talk about details on the air, Michael. We, <laughs> we know that you're smart and you need the computer. I know. I just these I guys and their computers. I don't want to under promise and under deliver. He needs his computer. He needs a microphone and what all? I don't know. And all the what all? It's nine minutes after. We're going to try it. We're going to try it next week and see if it works. Because I mean, are most people off all week next week? 
I think a lot of people are taking off next week. I don't know that they are off, but I think they're just taking vacation. Yeah. It's the fourth, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Especially with the 4th of July being on a Tuesday. Mm. You know, I think if, if, if the 4th fell on a Saturday or Friday, oh, yeah. Saturday, or Sunday. See, I was trying to determine if this weekend is 4th of July weekend. I guess it is. Well, yeah. All right, coming up. The big announcement from uh, City Councilman P.J. Conley. He's already leaked it to the WITN people, Dak Gummit. Wait, what did you just say? <laughs> Dak Gummit. Leak Dak. Okay. He just, they, he's already leaked that he's running for mayor to, to, to WITN. I was supposed to get the scoop. But Weaver's already – and Heather was on this morning talking about it. I'm like, come hey, on, Gummit man. Gummit Conley. Come on, Come man. on, man. Come on, man. He's sent a press release out last night. Exactly. I'm still going to do the interview because I like PJ and I want to see what why he thinks he should be mayor. So PJ Conley coming up to make his kind of make his announcement about running for mayor here on the program. Um, Kelly Pickler is set, is 31 years old today. Remember, she was like 16 or something when she was on American Idol. Well, she was older than that. She won, uh, but she also was on. She was younger than 16. When she was on American Idol, I believe she was. She was? I thought she was like 16. Um, also having a birthday today, John Cusack, who was just 51. I would have thought he would have been older than that. I used to love Cusack. You know, when he did the 80s movies, when he did like uh, the... Say Anything. The, yeah, the, the Lloyd Dobler movies. Mm -hmm. Say Anything. There were a couple of more that he did as Lloyd Dobler, weren't there? I loved him. And then one night he was on Letterman, and I saw him on Letterman, and he is just a, he's just another huge Hollywood liberal. And so I just I, I don't like him anymore. Eyes, I know. That's the best the scene ever, the right, when he's out there. Oh, that's got, a good scene. He holds scene. the uh, boombox over his head, and he plays the Peter Gabriel song. Good scene. That's the best scene. That's one of the best movies ever, if you like those kind of movies, which I did back in the day, back in the 80s. But now I, when I see Cusack now, I just think of him as up. Oh, Another Hollywood lib thinks he knows more than everybody else because he's went to acting school. <laughs> can't you can't you you people who are in acting don't know more than everybody else. It's only the people in radio. <laughs> <laughs> you went to radio school. Uh, by the speaking of that, by the way, uh, <laughs> Rush Limbaugh's got a new book, and the and the guy that kind of ghost wrote the book with him wants to be on the show. Should we put him on? Oh yeah. You know, how, you know who I've got on tomorrow's show. We've got an author of a book, a guy named Henry Olson, who's written a book about what Reagan would think of today's political world. I think that's going to be pretty interesting. This guy claims to be a Reagan um, expert. That's his expertise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's an inside joke for some people that got that, but others didn't. Uh, so <laughs> I, I know you wouldn't have gotten that. That's that was something from golf yesterday. <laughs> You'd have glad to, we could all participate there, Henry. I know. I, it, sometimes Thank I you. get carried away. Uh, John Elway is 57 today. A legend and inspiration to all quarterbacks who've come after him, except maybe Tim Tebow. <laughs> Promotion. Kathy Bates is 69. Remember the movie Misery? Mm -hmm. Was that the most uncomfortable movie very, you've ever seen? Very. It was the eerie movie. James Caan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Strapped to the bed. Strapped to the bed. When she beats his feet. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's gosh. awful. She says, I'm doing this for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Can I have another? You know, James Caan, uh, I used to really, really love James Caan when he was doing of course, he was Sonny in, uh, in Sonny The Godfather. Corleone. He was Son Sonny Corleone. I'd really, uh, I went through a period where I really loved his movies. He did a movie that was shot in Norfolk. He was a sailor. What was that movie called? Cinderella Liberty, I believe. Hmm. It was a really, see if, that, see if I'm right about that. See, and I really liked him. It was shot in Norfolk? I, it was shot in Norfolk, Virginia, because he, uh, he was a sailor. Hmm. And... Um, the big movie that I remember shot there and in Virginia Beach when I was coming up was Navy Seals. Oh, really? Yeah, that had um, maybe Charlie Sheen, I think, was in that movie. Yeah, he was. Yeah. 
But James Conn, I, there was something all, I was flipping around last night trying to go to sleep. And there was something on last night, a movie of his. Remember Rollerball? Oh, yeah. What a horrible yeah. movie. <laughs> and I watched like five minutes of it last night. And, I rem- and, I, and it was one of those things where I, it made me think back. Think about all the bad movies you've sat through in your life. Wouldn't you like to have that time back? Yes. Yeah, stop or my mom will shoot. I want, I want Do you the remember time that back one? that I went to movie theater and paid to see Rollerball. Do you remember that one? <laughs> yeah. The Sylvester Stallone movie? Yeah. Yeah. If you could Horrible. total up that time and add it to the end of your life, you'd probably live another year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want that time back. <laughs> I want all that time back. Mel Brooks is 91 today. Wow. He's had some great movies. All right, so we mentioned, um, oh, uh, today is Woody Peel's birthday. Woody is 79. Congre- Happy birthday, that. Woody. I saw that. And seen Woody in a while. Woody's the legendary sports editor of the Daily Reflector back when it had readers. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I kid my friends. Woody, at the newspaper. Woody still does stuff for the Reflector. He does, Some yes. golf articles. He does. Woody Peel. A great American, 79. I used to travel around with a football team, and Woody, I was doing the radio. Woody was doing the newspaper. Uh, he's a great guy. And uh, have a, uh, Woody, happy birthday to you, 79 today. And a big hello to his better half, Linda. Yes, she's a sweet lady. She is a sweetheart. Woody does not deserve her. <laughs> did you find that movie? Uh, I did, but it said it was shot in Seattle, Washington. I, that's what I said. <laughs> so shot in Seattle. <laughs> Did, did you think I said Norfolk? You misunderstood. See, I, 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 I thought didn't it was remember. shot. In, it, was, it was about Norfolk. It was supposed to be about Norfolk. Don't uh, don't re-Google it in case I'm I wrong know. again. I, I got to look this up. <laughs> God, now look, my now memory look up, of it is that it was supposed to be about Norfolk, Virginia, and now, a sailor. Now look up where Navy SEALs was filmed. Much yeah. of that. While you're doing that, let me mention a couple of things. Uh, we mentioned uh, that we have a new dean at the ECU School of, Mo- of, of uh, Medicine, um, Dr. Mark Stacy, who is coming from one of the top physicians at Duke. One of the uh, he runs a big center at Duke. Big research guy. That's exciting to hear. And we mentioned um, also. The new contract for uh, Jeff Comp for the director of athletics. Now, he got a new five-year contract. Now, McGee has been reading me some of the negative comments off of uh, some of these fan websites, which I would like to address this morning, if I may. Because I think that, you know, we have at ECU a rabid fan base. And I used to say this all the time. Because, you know, I've been involved with uh, uh, ECU Athletics for a long time. And uh, I, I don't apologize for the fact that, um, that I love my university. I love my alma mater, and I love uh, ECU Athletics. But I try to be objective. I mean, but, you know, Weaver, you cover, you've been covering them forever, just like me. You try to be objective, but you get to know these people. Yeah. So you get to know their character and those kind of things. It's just like what we've talked about forever with our friend Steve Logan. You know, people would, you know, they love Steve Logan when he won nine games, and then you know he won six games, and they wanted him out. Well, I mean, you how go, did that? How did that go for us? By the way, you go down the line. Ruffin McNeil is the latest in that that line of coaches, where you know, especially like you mentioned, uh, p- people like us that are you know, deal with the athletics department on a daily basis. You get to know these people. You know, Skip Holtz was one of my favorites. I, I loved them all, you know. So you, you, you hate to see them go, but some, like you said, sometimes you got to be objective. I think I, – I personally believe that you have to look when, – when you're judging an athletic director, you got to judge based on what he can affect and what he can – what he, you know, pe- people see this. What they see of an athletic director's job is: Did we win in football? Did we win in basketball? That's what they see. And of course, you know, w- the, the the football program has been down for a few years, and so everybody's kind of negative right now. And and then of course, there's always the issue of you know, what do you do about ECU basketball? I mean, we we've now gone into one of the top conferences in the country with a program that has never won in basketball. Never. I've been here since 1971. We've never won in basketball. We've had a few years where we did pretty good, but we have no basketball tradition 
every now and then we've slipped into the NCAA tournament. I think in my – since I've been here in 1971, we've been to the NCAAs three times. I believe I'm right about that. With the last time being 93. Yeah, we went in Correct. 70. Actually, well, maybe, remember, maybe only twice it's, because it's, we it's went twice. in 72. It's twice. My freshman year we went in 72. And then we went again in 93, and that was the year we played uh, Eric Montross. Yeah, and they uh, and that they won the national championship. They, North Carolina right. won the national title that year. But, I mean, that's no basketball tradition. You sneak in every now and then. Well, and they really snuck in in 93 because if you remember, East Carolina had a losing record going into the NCAA uh, tournament. It's they, they got hot during the CAA up in Richmond and won that tournament and got in the automatic, uh, the automatic bid. And again, you go back to the issue of whether, you know, the coaching change year before last was the right decision. And, you know, Weaver, uh, you and I you were privy to a lot of information a lot of other people don't get. But you know, I'm not saying we know more than other people. We just, we just get more information than the average fan. And so reading some of these comments, I mean, it's just like this. It's like uh, if we win, you're a hero. If you don't win, you're a goat. But you've got to build the foundation to get there. And I think that's what uh, they're trying to do right now. And I can tell you that, you know, again, if you go back to what an athletic director can, where can he affect change? And um, you either subscribe to the idea that the football program was heading in the wrong direction and needed new leadership, or you subscribe to the idea that, you know, well, we screwed the program up by getting rid of the coach. And so th the answer to that question cannot be – obtained in one year am i right right so you've got to give it i think three years to to rebuild the program if it was moving in the wrong direction that's what i think so um you know i think you've got you got a young energetic coach in scotty montgomery and so the question is was that a good hire or not again you know we all like scotty we think he's you know bringing the right energy and the right approach to the thing and everything but you know you won three games last year and you got to give them a chance to win so it's just like you know they you have to keep remember they hung dean smith in effigy <laughs> you have to give a guy a time to get it going so this year hopefully will be a building block and then i think the third year is where you really really have to measure a guy yeah because then he starts to get not only does he have his own recruits in there, but then his own recruits in that third year are starting to be guys that you see on the field, guys that are, are going to be, you know, the, the upcoming juniors and seniors of that yeah. class. But I, I saw, you know, there was a comment there on uh, one of the websites this morning about, well, the Board of Trustees, they're not athletic guys. They don't know. And I, I would love to know who wrote that and what they do for a living. Because let me tell you something. There's some of the people on the board of trustees played football at ECU. So, you know, I would love to know who wrote that because whoever wrote that is not even knowledgeable enough to know who's on the trustees to make that comment. You know, I'm telling you, you, you can't make that comment. Yeah, and, and ADs now have, have extremely difficult jobs because we're in a win-now society, have to win, have to make a bowl game, have to make a bowl game consecutive years. You know, it's, it's win now or we don't want you to stay. It's different than what it was 20 years ago. Let me wrap this up. So, so where can an athletic director affect change? He can demand high academics. The, ath the academics at ECU in Jeff Comfer's years has risen significantly. The, um, the combined annual grade point average of the students at ECU athletics, over 3.0. 3.02. That's pretty darn impressive. Mm -hmm. Where can an athletic director affect change? Facilities. Look at the facilities here. Now, you got to give Terry Holland some credit because there was a lot of great things done during the Terry Holland years yep. in, in that as well. And um, the this past year, is anyone aware that in one year, there was nearly $33 million raised by the Pirate Club. Now, you got to give Jay Bat a lot of credit for that. And, of course, as a result, Jay Bat's now going down to run the Booster Club at the University of Alabama. But let me tell you, I've watched those two guys work together, and, Jay, and, and Jeff Comfer is a huge part of that fundraising effort, too. 33 
million dollar brand new football stadium coming that's going to change that whole football stadium look. Can an athletic director affect that? Of course, that's one of the things that he did. Um, he, of course, uh, uh, negotiated a new deal with Adidas, which is 10. And by the way, everybody was screaming out, why are we going to Adidas? Did you see the numbers the other day that Adidas has now overtaken Nike in a big way with all of the, uh, the, the, the revenues from college sports? Um, and, you know, just, just generally being a, a good person and good character and those kind of things. Now, you know, the other thing that, I, that I've heard argued is scheduling. Well, you know, we're not, we're, we're not scheduling the team. You know, we don't want to play these teams like BYU. And the, well, that, that's, that Who wasn't, says they don't that want, want to pay, play BYU? I've heard that from somebody. Well, but, anybody that says that is crazy. But Jeff, Jeff didn't that's schedule. That's a great game. The schedules – are made like five, ten yeah, years in advance. Yeah. But still, that BYU game is a great game. And then That's going to be and one everybody's I'm screaming about the fact that that uh, South Carolina signed that contract to come here, and they they keep buying out the contract. You can't stop that. No, no, you can't. You can't stop that. The only way you're going to get a game with a team like South Carolina is to put a buyout in it. And of course, at some point, they're going to make the decision whether it's in their best interest to come here or pay it out. And and so, but so he gets criticized for a lot of things, that and and you know maybe some of it is probably legit and and uh, and fair. I'm not saying he's perfect, but I think he's done a good job here, and I really like the idea that they rewarded him with a five year contract yesterday. And I know you know maybe everybody didn't feel that, but I I do feel that way. And you know what? And I think in two years you're going to look back on this and say it was the right decision. But that's the way that's the way these things happen. You got to give it time. Got to give it time. All right, that's my little soliloquy on that. Twenty six after eight. We're going to take a break. We will be back. PJ Conley announcing that he is running for mayor live here on the program. Actually, he's announcing it for the second time because Weaver's got it coming up in news next. We'll be right back. <laughs> The days to save major cash on Camrys and Corollas are here during Greenville Toyota's dealing days of summer. Get Corollas just $14,999 or lease for $169 a month. Camry $16,999 or $199 a month at Greenville Toyota. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. My prescription refills. My son's shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents' care. My chart. Bite at my chart. 
Vidant MyChart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1-855-MYVIDANT to learn how you can sign up. Greenville Toyota is bringing you huge savings on Toyotas during their dealing days of summer. Save on hundreds of Toyotas, like Rav Force, just $22,999, or lease for $219 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota. Eight thirty, and uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes, our exclusive interview with uh, PJ Conley, Greenville City Councilman, who says he's throwing his hat in the ring and running for mayor. So now there are two candidates running for mayor in November, and we're going to talk to PJ about that in just a minute. First, let's get some news headlines. With that breaking news <laughs> from WITN, here is Billy Weaver. Good morning. Good morning, Henry. It's currently 830, 62 degrees in Greenville. Here's a look at your WITN news headlines. The Greenville Police Department is investigating an overnight shooting that left one person dead and two others injured. Officers responded to a shots fired call in the parking lot of the 100 block of River Bluff Road at around 1130 on Tuesday night, according to a news release issued by Public Information Officer Kristen Hunter. 26-year-old Rufus Stanf Stansel of Greenville was pronounced dead at the scene. Two other victims were transported to Viden Medical Center for gunshot wounds. No word on their condition at this hour. Police did not identify the two victims pending the notif notification of their family members. The investigation is ongoing and more details on this case are expected as they become available later today. Greenville City, City Councilman P.J. Connolly has announced he's running for mayor. The first-term councilman of District 5 says he's mainly focused on job growth and public safety. Councilman at large Calvin Mercer also announced that he is running for mayor. The seat is vacant following the resignation of Alan Thomas, who accepted a position with the Global Trans Park in Kinston. Well, the Senate GOP health care vote is a no-go, at least for now. Senate Majority Leader Mitchell McCon Mitch McConnell postponed a planned vote on the Republican health care bill until after the 4th of July recess. Both moderate and more conservative Republicans opposed parts of the proposed bill, prompting the postponement. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office had also estimated 22 million more people would lose health care coverage under the bill. Republican senators later traveled to the White House where they met with President Trump, who claimed Obamacare was, quote, melting down. Following the meeting, McConnell said there's a really good chance of eventual passage at a later date. And alcohol sales on Sunday mornings are a step closer to being a reality in the state of North Carolina. The Senate will now consider the bill that would let local governments pass ordinances for restaurants, grocery stores, and other retailers to start selling alcohol at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Right now, the law is currently at noon. The House also removed a provision from the bill that would have allowed distillers to sell and ship liquor directly out of state. Another amendment that would have permitted only restaurants to serve alcohol before noon on Sundays failed. It is currently 833, 62 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and that's a look at your WITN news <clears throat> headlines. Thank you, Weave. 833, let's, uh, let's check some sports headlines now. Here's McGee on sports. All right, we just talked about it. ECU uh, Director of Athletics Jeff Comfer agreed to a five-year contract extension on Tuesday that will pay him $435,000 annually. The new agreement that runs through 2023 was approved by the University Board of Trustees. His initial contract was set to expire in 2018. College World Series from Tuesday night. Florida won its first national championship, putting away LSU 6-1. to one. The Gators swept the best of three final series against the Tigers. And Scotland County High School running back Zamir White, the nation's top running back in the class of 2018 out of Laurenburg, will continue his football career at the University of Georgia. White chose the Bulldogs over Alabama, Clemson, North Carolina, and Ohio State. Okay, here's your weather update for today. We're looking for sunshine and a high of uh, 85, clear at 62 tonight. Sunshine back up near 90 tomorrow, about 87 for a high, and back to 90 on Friday and through the weekend. A little chance of rain, about 30% chance of rain. Currently 834, 26 in front of 9 o'clock, this commercial break, and then the uh, exclusive from our uh, Greenville City Councilman, P.J. Connolly, who says he, you should elect him mayor of Greenville. After uh, the current mayor has stepped down, we'll talk to P.J. Connolly next and see why he thinks he should be mayor of Greenville. Be right back. 
We are ready for springtime here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Let us help you find a new car or truck at the right payment for you. Check out the Drive and Discover event. Lease a new Ram 1500 crew cab truck for $299 a month and just $299 due at signing. Or drive a new 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee for just $279 per month. And come check out the all new 2017 Jeep Compass. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see that. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. Welcome in to the new Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you ready to drive a little to save a lot? I'm Rod Emery, General Manager at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Come see us here in Washington for the best deal on a new car, truck, or Jeep and a great sales and service experience. Lease a new Ram crew cab truck for just $299 a month and only $299 due at signing during our Drive and Discover event. We're looking forward to seeing you at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located on Highway 264 in between Greenville and Washington, or visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. All right, welcome back. It's 837. And, of course, uh, if you've been following the news here in Greenville, political news, you know that uh, long, I guess like three-term mayor, uh, Alan Thomas, has stepped down as mayor of Greenville. And uh, currently the mayor pro tem, Candy Smith, will be serving for a while until the city council makes a decision about who's going to be mayor. But then the citizens will decide who the new mayor of Greenville will be in an election that will be held the first week in November. Uh, there is already one candidate in the race. Uh, Greenville City Councilman Calvin Mercer immediately announced that he was running for, uh, city, uh, for, for mayor. And uh, as of last night at about 10 minutes after 9, I got a press release from another city council person, P.J. Conley, who says that he is running for mayor. We have P.J. Conley live in the studio this morning. It's a Talk of the Town exclusive. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Henry. I'm good, doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, so you so you think that you you uh, you want to run for mayor? I do. I'm excited about it. I'm yeah. excited about the opportunity. Tell, tell us why. Uh, now, you, you're in your first term as a city council person from District 5. Uh, what made you decide to jump in the ring like this? I mean, I was just excited. I, the opportunity came. Um, you know, with, with Alan Thomas leaving after the three terms, you know, it was just one of those opportunities. You know, it, it took me a little bit of time to uh, to think about it. First of all, I need to talk to my family about it and make sure that uh, my wife and my two little girls would, would be on board with it first. But uh, after I was able to talk to them and, and make sure that I'd be able to handle it with my business, 
um, I decided, I said, this would be, this would be a great opportunity. And I think I could be very helpful for the city of Greenville. You mentioned your business. T tell us who you are for people who don't know. Now you, there are going to be a lot more people scrutinizing you now than ever have in the past. Uh, tell give us a little bit about, uh, background about your, uh, who you are and what you, what you've done in your past and, and what you're doing now. Of course. Um, you know, I, I came here uh, to East Carolina University. I was recruited here. I played baseball at East Carolina uh, for a few years and then uh, played professionally for, for, for a few years as well. Um, I have a, a finance degree from ECU. Uh, after I finished up my career, I came back here and opened our own real estate company. And we've been in business for about 10 years now. My wife and I own our own real estate company. We do uh, commercial sales, residential sales, and we do property management. We mostly focus on property management. but. Uh, We've been here for 10 years. Um, I love the city of Greenville. I always tell everybody I've traveled all over the country playing professional baseball. And, you know, I always wanted to come back to Greenville because I knew it was a great place to raise a family. It was a great place to own my own business. You know, there's so many opportunities here. A lot of people who are in business don't want to be in politics. They think that it's too time consuming and, um, uh, you know, they, they, they worry about it hurting their business and, and those kind of things. Uh, clearly, you've stepped out of that, um, that fear. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, the other question is, do you have time to run a business and be mayor? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a tough decision. And that was something that, you know, I really did make, uh, make an effort to, to find out if I'd be able to do it. And, and it takes a lot of organizing, to be honest with you. It really does. I'm, I work a lot. I'm a very hard worker. Uh, wake up early in the morning. I'm up working about five o'clock in the morning and I'll work till 10 o'clock at night. Uh, but you have to be very organized. And I, I know that I've, I'll be able to commit the time that I need to to be the mayor of the city of Greenville. What's your philosophy about the job of the mayor? You are you are the face as the mayor of the city of Greenville. It's it's a lot different than being a city council member. You know where you're a vote. Um, you know being the mayor, you're the face. You you are the one that meets you know potential uh, businesses that are looking to locate here. You're the one that is at the events. You're the one that kind of. I guess gives the first impression for people in our community. Um, I think it's very, very intriguing to me, but it's it's one of those things that you have to work together with with many different partners to be able to make things happen in our community. And I think that uh, it's a little bit different role, but I'm I'm excited about it. I think it's it's something I'm really really looking forward to. Now um, we just had you on our uh, Greenville Community Summit. Uh, we were talking about some of the different issues in Greenville. Um, Greenville is a great place we we who love here love living here and it's it's uh, i don't want to live anywhere else I've, I've lived other places and i come back to I've, I've left twice and come back just like you people who live leave greenville usually come back to greenville because it's such a great place to live but um but we don't we're not without problems we're not without issues so talk about some of those things that you want to accomplish if you're elected mayor what kind of things are you uh, are you looking at that you think will be the big things that come up in the next two years you know a, a quick and easy slogan is back to basics i think one of the things that we really need to focus on as a community is we need we need jobs here we need good high paying dignified jobs for people of our community we've got two wonderful inst institutions we've got east carolina university Pitt community college we have students that they come here every single year and they leave and they go back to their communities because they struggle to find employment here, and I think that's one of the things that we really need to focus on. We need to find, we need to be able to enhance some of the uh, the businesses here in town, give them a, an incentive for them to to increase their uh, uh, their workforce, and then we also want to recruit new businesses here. I think also a component with that that helps you grow with that is we've got to focus on public safety. I think public safety is very very important for our community. Um, you know, over the last couple of years that I've been on the council. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of, you know, increasing our police presence. We've increased, I think, about 10 police officers over the last two years, which is fantastic. So we're getting closer to the state average uh, for police officers per capita. And then also we've been putting a focus on uh, increasing the lighting, increasing some of the safety aspects to our community. A year ago, my first year in council, it was terrible. We had so many people that um, had suffered from being hit, pedestrians being hit on, on sidewalks or, or uh, you know, in bike lanes and whatnot. And I think that's something that we need to focus on. You know, those are those are basic necessities of our community, and I think it's going to grow us as a community. Uh, P.J. Connolly, uh, District uh, 5 representative in the Greenville City Council, announcing today that he is running for mayor of Greenville. And, you, you know, some people would say, P.J., that uh, you're giving up power because the truth of the matter is 
the mayor of Greenville generally doesn't have a say in the votes that come up on issues before the city council unless there's a tie. You have six city council people and a mayor, so if there's a 3-3 tie, the mayor gets a vote. But, you know, I can only remember a handful of times uh, over the last few years that the mayor's actually voted. So uh, is the mayor of Greenville more just a public relations job than it is actually a policy job? I, you know, it kind of is. I mean, it's it like I said, it, it it's a matter of sitting down and, and getting all the partners together. I mean, you have to have strong leadership, you know, and I feel like I have that quality. I feel like I can sit down with the council members, talk to them, you know, and, and the toughest thing is that uh, you all don't, not everybody gets to gets along. We don't have the same vision, but, you know, the key is you need a strong leader, somebody that's willing to pick up the phone, uh, call, and, and come up with a consensus of what we can all be happy with. And I feel like I have that quality, and I feel like I can lead us into the uh, the future. So so uh, a lot of times the mayor becomes the referee. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this council may, you know, as I, as I think about this, with two city councilmen already in the race for mayor, Candy Smith, the mayor pro tem, has not ruled it out yet. She's actually thinking about running for mayor. If you end up with three candidates from the city council running for mayor, the, the city council is going to lose uh, two, uh, two people. Uh, if, there's, if someone from the outside came in and ran for mayor and won, could lose three people. Mm -hmm. So there could be a big change in, um, in the direction of the council moving forward. Have you thought about that and how that would affect the city? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's something that the citizens need to be concerned about. Um, you know, I think we're in a great situation right and, now. And by the way, I didn't mention that uh, that, that our first district, uh, a, sec a third district uh, councilman, uh, McLean Godley, has already announced he's not running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's tough. I mean, you you have a turnover every two years, but I mean, that's the that's the beauty of politics. If you have people in there that you don't want in there, two years later you can get them out. I mean, that's yeah. that's the tough part about politics. Yeah. You know, you you need to be looking out for the best interests of the citizens and. And I, I hope they, they feel the same way. I feel like I've worked really hard for them over the last two years. I remember when you ran for city council, you, you went door to door in your district. <laughs> and you, you knocked on doors. And, you know, people were saying, yeah, I got P.J. Conley. He, he's a nice guy and he, he works hard and, and all that. But, I mean, nobody goes door to door and knocks on doors. You can't campaign like that in a big city like Greenwood. But it worked for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and and I thought that was kind of interesting that, that you took that tactic. Uh, but now you're going to have to campaign throughout the whole city. You, you can't knock on every door in Greenville, can you? I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> but I, I can't guarantee. I was 2,355 doors last time. So Is that right? I guess if there's five districts, I just need to uh, multiply that by five. So. So How did 10, you keep 000. up with them? Would you just keep a running tally? It, every day, every day. I, I think I, I count. I, I walked over 10, or excuse me, over 200 miles. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was fun. Wow. I lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've always been in great shape anyway. Uh, now you're on the city council. You've been there two years. You want to be mayor. What's been the biggest surprise to you, either about the city of Greenville, something you didn't know that you now understand better, or just about politics in general, or maybe both? I'll tell you, the first time that I, I went to the first meeting in, in the first couple months, you know, I felt like now that I'm on the city council, I can do anything. Everybody's going to believe exactly what I believe. <laughs> and, and then you go up there and you start losing five to one every time you go, <laughs> wait a second. You know, this, this is a team effort. You know, this is something that, you know, you've got to get together with different personalities. You know, you need to take a leadership role. You need to be able to say, listen. You know, we're not going to we're not going to go ahead and agree on everything, but let's figure out something because we've got to look out for the best interest for the citizens of Greenville and, you know, come up with a solution that everybody's happy with. Um, that was the first thing I think that I learned about politics. It's it's very, very interesting. It's 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 a tough challenge, but I enjoy it. You know, being a professional baseball player, it's like a competition. But, you know, you've you've got you've got to make the best decision for the citizens of Greenville. They've elected you to be there. And, and I've enjoyed that. You know, it's funny, uh, having been a professional athlete uh, like you like you were, uh, you, you know, you see a lot of people that are in, in uh, competitive sports. They want to get into politics, and they, and they do well, usually. What is it about that? What is it about your uh, sports background that has helped you in this uh, job as city councilman? I think it has to do with just kind of a desire and wanting to work hard. Uh, strong work ethic is, is very important. 
I love I love working. I mean, it just I was one of those guys. Who, even in even as a uh, senior in high school, I was going to the gym six six days a week for two two and a half hours because it was just it was I was passionate about it. You know, you kind of get into it, and it doesn't become a job. You know, it's more mm-hmm. or less it's what you do. You enjoy doing it, and you love to do it. And I've gotten into politics, and it's become my hobby. It yeah. really has. How do, how are you different than the other announced candidate, Calvin Mercer? And we'll get into this more as we get closer to November. We'll get into the issues. But, you know, uh, as, as kind of out of the gate, how do you see yourself as a different candidate than Mercer? I think I have a good vision, to be honest with you. I, I think I know – I think to, to know where, where we need to take Greenville, you have to have a good vision. You have to know what the components are that you need to have to be able to get to the next level. And I feel like I know that. I feel like I've studied it. I sit there at night. I'll, I'll go through. I write. I write letters and, and I write uh, paragraphs of things that I want to do. How I'd like to see Greenville change. Um, you know, I think the I think the vision and, and the leadership is extremely extremely important. All right. Well, it's all like Donkey Kong. It'll be an interesting <laughs> competitive uh, race, I think, coming up for mayor of Greenville. And uh, you know, with uh, with Mayor uh, Thomas stepping down. We knew there'd be a lot of interest, and uh, it certainly looks that way. And, and it's early. Mm-hmm. I mean, was there any particular? Uh, did you feel like you needed to get out early? Mercer announced right away after Al, uh, Allen stepped down that he's running for mayor. I mean, it didn't take him but, but a day or so. Uh, and now you're announcing just a couple of weeks. Uh, but it's early. I mean, there could be more people that that you know that aren't in politics now that want to run for mayor. Was there any particular strategy in making an early announcement? Well, I mean, I, I hope that, uh, you know, it gives an opportunity for the citizens to uh, to learn a little bit more about me. It gives them a little bit more time. You know, I'm a, I'm a first term uh, city council member. And also, you got to remember, I've got a, there's going to be a vacant seat in District 5, too. So maybe this is an opportunity for people in District 5 that are passionate about the city of Greenville and want to have a voice at the table to come out and say, hey, maybe I can make a change in the city of Greenville. Well, that's an interesting point, because you're announcing early that you're you're going to run for mayor. That means you're also leaving your city council job as district five at the end of this term. That's right. So, uh, you know, it, it, it would, it would give people an opportunity to think it over and maybe get in the race. If there's somebody out there that's considering a run for city council out of district five, be Absolutely. interesting. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks Good to see you as well. Make, kind of making the announcement on our show, but we got the exclusive, you, you got the it. exclusive interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, PJ. I appreciate it. We'll be following this with great interest as everybody in Greenville will, as this mayor's race looks like it's shaping up to be a, a really good, one. All right, eight minutes in front of nine. We'll be right back. The days to save major cash on Camrys and Corollas are here during Greenville Toyota's dealing days of summer. Get Corollas just $14,999 or lease for $169 a month. Camry $16,999 or $199 a month at Greenville Toyota. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or Catch the game live, way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. We are ready for springtime here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Let us help you find a new car or truck at the right payment for you. Check out the Drive and Discover event. Lease a new Ram 1500 crew cab truck for $299 a month and just $299 due at signing. Or drive a new 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee for just $279 per month. And come check out the all new 2017 Jeep Compass. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. 
Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. My prescription refills. My son's shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents' care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. Greenville Toyota is bringing you huge savings on Toyotas during their dealing days of summer. Save on hundreds of Toyotas, like Rav Force, just $22,999, or lease for $219 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota. Talk of the town at uh, 8.55. Great to have uh, P.J. Connolly uh, in the studio with us this morning. Appreciate P.J. stopping by. It's going to be an interesting mayor's race for sure. Talk of the town brought to you in part this morning by our friends at Air U Indoor Trampoline Park and Party Center. They are open for the summer. In fact, my uh, three-year-old grandson was there for a birthday party last night. If you're thinking about having a birthday party for one of your kids this summer, there's no better place Get them inside the air condition. Let them run around on those trampolines and jump into the foam pit and all that. They have a ball. It's great. They got the Ninja Warrior course, the dodgeball, the whole deal. And new things coming, some new attractions coming to uh, Air U Indoor Trampoline Park and Party Center. Also, great spot for summer camps. If you're looking for something to do with your camp kids this summer, nothing better than Air U. Check them out. They're uh, on uh, Corey Road in Winterville next to Boyd Lee Park. All right, we are out. Thank you for being here this morning. Don't forget, coming up on uh, Friday morning, we're coming to Bellhaven, folks. All those, all you folks down in Bellhaven, want you to come out and see us down at the Chamber Building Friday morning, 7 to 9, as we kick off a huge 4th of July weekend in Bellhaven. Back in the studio tomorrow. We'll see you then. Welcome in to the new Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you ready to drive a little to save a lot? I'm Rod Emery, General Manager at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Come see us here in Washington for the best deal on a new car, truck, or Jeep and a great sales and service experience. Lease a new Ram Crew Cab truck for just $2.99 a month and only $2.99 due at signing during our Drive and Discover event. We're looking forward to seeing you at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located on Highway 264 in between Greenville and Washington, or visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents' care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. 
Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. We are ready for springtime here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Let us help you find a new car or truck at the right payment for you. Check out the Drive and Discover event. Lease a new Ram 1500 crew cab truck for $299 a month and just $299 due at signing. Or drive a new 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee for just $279 per month. And come check out the all new 2017 Jeep Compass. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. 